G'day, my name is John Steele from the University of New South Wales. It's another in my little series of videos on complex analysis. In this video we're going to be looking at Taylor series. Uh, this is an important theorem here, Taylor's theorem. If a given function is analytic on some disk centred at say a point Z0, then it can be represented as a power series, where the coefficients a n here are given by the nth derivative. And it, this series will work on mod Z minus Z0 less than r. Uh, in fact, this, the theorem goes backwards as well. If you write a uh, power series down, then the, uh, where it converges on some disk, the function you get is analytic. Now, uh, there are at least two power series we expect you to know uh, in order to find these things. We hardly ever use the theorem. Right? We hardly ever calculate the derivatives and therefore get the series out. We manipulate known series. It's the best way forward. And the two series you really have to know, I've written up here. The exponential series, the e to the z, around z equals 0, 1 plus z plus z squared on 2 factorial and so on, or sigma zn over uh, n factorial, which converges for all z. And the other one is the geometric uh, series, 1 over 1 minus z, 1 plus z plus z squared and so on, uh, sigma z to the n, but that only converges if mod z is strictly less than 1. There are several other series you probably ought to know, the series for sine, for cos, for sine, for cosh. Uh, you can get them from the series for the exponential, since um, the exponential and the trig and the hyperbolic functions are intimately connected. Uh, another one you might want to remember is 1 over 1 plus z, which you can just get from substituting z uh, equal minus z in here, you get 1 minus z plus z squared, and so on. And saying that actually uh, illustrates one of the important points about power series. They're very robust creatures. You can do almost anything you like to them. You can add them, subtract them, multiply them. You can even divide them as long as you don't divide by something that vanishes. And they will still converge exactly where you expect them to. But better than that, you can actually differentiate a power series term by term, and it will stay valid, stay convergent. And you can even anti-differentiate a power series term by term. So... In fact, we can see this for the exponential. If we were to differentiate these, this power series term by term, as if it's an infinite polynomial, this term would disappear, we'd get 1, this would become a z, the next term would become z squared on 2 factor over the cancellation, and so on. E, the derivative of e to the z is e to the z, as we all know. And similarly here, for 1 over 1 minus z, if we wanted the series for 1 over 1 minus z all squared, we just differentiate this thing term by term, that term would go, we get 1 plus 2z plus 3z squared, and so on. And that would be the power series for 1 over 1 minus z squared, which would converge if mod z is strictly less than 1. If we anti-differentiate this power series, we're going to get something for the logarithm, the minus, one over one, minus log of 1 minus z, in fact. We'd get z plus z squared on 2 plus z cubed on 3, etc., plus an arbitrary constant, and that arbitrary constant is basically telling you which branch of the logarithm you've picked. We looked at branches of the log in one of my earlier videos. So what I want to do now is look at uh, just a few quick examples on how you manipulate these series. I'm just going to do this for a few rational functions, uh, doing it for trig functions, for, for example, the series for 1 over sec. That's uh, a little bit more complicated. So here I'm just going to do three examples. My first one is the for the power series uh, for 1 over z minus 3 about z equals 0, which is another way of saying in powers of z minus 0 or just in powers of z. Uh, a Taylor series in powers of z is usually referred to as a Maclaren series. So in this case, uh, 1 over 3, mi z 3 minus z, well the singularity, the place where f is clearly not analytic, is at z equals 3. And our theorem says, as long as we're analytic on a disk, then we'll get a Taylor series. And we're going to be centred at zero. And clearly, the disk is going to be the disk mod z less than three. It's always very easy to tell when Taylor series converge in the complex plane. You're just measuring distances from the point of expansion, the z naught, out to the nearest singularity. And inside that disk, you'll have a Taylor series. So for this one, we're just going to manipulate the series for 1 over 1 minus z. We will write f as, uh, well, in fact, the simplest thing to do is to take out the factor of 3. So we'll do that. It's 1 third 1 over 1 minus 
z over 3. So now we use this formula here to write the thing in terms of a series. What do we get? 1 third 1 plus z on 3 plus z squared on 9 plus and so on. And it's useful to write down the clause, where does this series converge? Always ask yourself where a series converges when you write it down. And this thing is going to work if, in fact, if and only if mod z over 3 is strictly less than 1. Now you could leave it there if you like, or you can tidy it up into sigmas. This is the sum from n is 0 to infinity, z to the n over 3 to the n plus 1 if mod z less than 3. And that's that one. In the second one, we'll look at the same function, but in this case about z equals 1. We'll get a different series. A given analytic function has infinitely many series, it just depends on which point you expand them around. So in this case we have to do a little bit of extra algebra. We're going to rewrite 3 minus z so it looks like something in terms of z minus 1, because that's the point of expansion. So you rewrite that as 1 over, uh, well, we want a z minus 1 right, in here, so this should have to be 2. Okay. And straight algebra tells you that's the same thing. Now, it's still not in the right shape to apply the series, because we must have a, a 1 minus something or other. So we modify what we did here, we pull out a half and we get 1 over 1 half 1 minus z minus 1 over 2, like that. And now we can apply our geometric series and expand in powers of z minus 1 over 2. We will get 1 half of 1 minus z minus 1 over 2 plus z minus 1 over 2, sorry, plus z minus 1 over 2 squared, plus and so on, and that will be convergent if mod z minus 1 over 2 is less than 1. In other words, if mod z minus 1 is less than 2. But in fact, that's what my little diagram told me before I even began. Here I've drawn a little circle, centred at 1, going through 3. My function is analytic in mod z minus 1, strictly less than 2, and that is what has come out of the calculation. I could rewrite this in terms of sigmas, but I won't in this one case. All right. Now, just to top off, uh, we can look at the situation where we differentiate. And as I said, we can just differentiate a, term, a power series term by term. If we want the series for 1 over z minus 3 squared around z equals 0, we just got to differentiate this, this term or that one, whichever one you like. Uh, and we'll get convergence in the same disk. This will be equal to the sum from n is 0 to infinity. Well, let's differentiate that one. n z to the n minus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 if mod z less than 3. Uh, in the same disk, of course, because this function is analytic exactly where... Uh, the original one was here. I've called it f, I should have called it f dash or something like that. So it would be the same pitch. So that's simple manipulation of um, standard power series. And this, in fact, is the only trick you really need if you're doing rational functions. You might have to break things up in terms of partial fractions if you've got something like 1 over z squared minus uh, 1. Break it up into some, uh, what is it, half over z minus 1 and a half over z plus 1. Or there's a minus sign in there somewhere. That's just partial fractions, and then you treat each part separately, and that will give you uh, the Taylor series.